Right, now let's start with the left hand trees now. But I want these darker to take the eye along the painting behind these lighter trees. So again, I use the large sky and texture brush to put in the foliage. But I want this to be darker. So I'm going to start with some burnt sienna, a bit of sap green. And I'm going to push the brush down and distort the brush on the palette. I'm just roughing it out this way for speed. I'll add a bit of Payne's Grey and a bit of Sap Green now. But I want this to be dark. I'm going to put some light foliage over the top. I'll show you how to do that. I'm just using this brush for speed. i use a bit of card as a template. I'm going to put the dark base in. The sub green, bit of pen's grey. Put the brush back and we'll start again with the Derwent water brush and we'll start shaping these trees a bit better. Bit of pen's grey, bit of sub green, let's just start shaping these bits here. Look, this is just the undercoat. I'll put the groups of foliage on in a moment. I want a dark background. Because trees are dark on the inside, light on the outside. Dark down the base there, the bottom. Again, let's scratch out with the wonder knife. There's a group of trees coming up here. Some straight ones up here like this. I'm just referring to the photograph. Don't try and copy it exactly. These are just quick sketches to teach you how to apply paint and I'm trying to show you a whole range of techniques which will help you in your development. Let's put this grassy area in here now. So again, I'll use a round brush. There's always a choice of brushes you can use. I'll use a little bit of cadmium yellow and a bit of sap green. And just a touch of raw sienna to soften the green. Need more water on the brush. We'll just brush that down like that. A bit more raw sienna. And again, I'm going to use my hair brush, a one and a half inch texture brush, and I'm going to put in the bank on the far side of the trees. So I'm just going to go along here, look, using the, this brush is designed to come to a chisel edge. So I'm going to just go along there and use that to put in the bank. And then we'll add a bit of Payne's Grey and a bit of burnt sienna which will give a dark area just to add the dark bits on the right hand river bank. I'm not brushing, I'm just moving the brush short distances like that. Now I'm coming back to the around size 8 brush. I'm just going to put a bit more grass down there, see. There's an area here where there's some, there's an outcrop here. So I'll use the wonder knife on that, but we'll just put a bit of raw sienna in here like this. Just brush it in very simple, but there's a little outcrop on here. Just putting them in very simple like that. I should have really done this before I put the trees in, but I forgot about it. So we'll do it now, just put that in like that. It's a bit of darker colour. Just going to flick that up there and then we'll soften it like that and then we'll just put in a few little, there's a few little rocky outcrops there I'm just going to put them in with a, using the wonder knife I'm not going to go mad because it's going to detract from the main picture but I better put them in and then we'll dry that It's time to use a three-quarter flat brush now, and I'm going to put these rocks in. Now, I'm going to use a technical term now, so I don't want you to get worried. I'm going to splash it on all over. All we're doing, look, is putting an undercoat for these rocks. I'm using raw sienna to start with. Again, don't try and copy these rocks exactly. If you want to spend two or three hours, then obviously you can, but 
I don't have that, so I'm creating an impression of the scene. We'll do a few at a time, look. There's a rock there too. Then I want some burnt sienna on. That rock's a feature rock, there's a point on it. Using a bit of darker colour now, a darker tone. For the dark tone, I, I love a bit of Payne's grey with a little bit of red, a deep rich purple colour. So we'll do that, a bit of red, a bit of Payne's grey. I don't want it red, but I want a nice dark colour. That's what I'm looking for, look. Because when I use a knife, it'll leave a dark shadow. Bit coming out there, look, nice big rock there. Leave some of the other colours showing through. This knife has changed my life. It sounds corny, doesn't it? But it has. I can do things I couldn't do with a normal brush. So here we go. Take up I'm using this corner of the knife now, and all I'm doing is what you do every morning when you butter your toast. I'm just moving the butter over my bread. That's the way you think of it, look. And it's a very effective way to paint impressions of rocks, look. It's simplicity itself. When you've used it for half a day, you wonder how you manage without it. Now you try and paint that with a brush. It's not that easy. Again, there's a big rock down here, remember? Some smaller rocks there. And there's lots of little rocks around here in between, which we'll put in. I use the full width of the brush when I need to, and for smaller rocks I'm just using the corner of the brush. The brush is just a tool for you to use as an artist. So back to the knife. Move that around like that. Right, we need to put some shadow in this in a moment, but for the moment, that will suffice. I'm going to the right hand side now because I want to get this feature rock in here. There's a big rock coming up there, look. And there's a few rocks up here which go off into the trees. A bit of pins grey and a bit of burnt sienna. Shadows on this side here. More paints grey. So here we go. What I'm going to do is I've lost a little bit of the shape of that rock, but I want to relax. So I'm just going to use a little bit of white acrylic, which is a, a watercolour based paint. And I'm just going to put that rock in there again, look. Same here. I don't want to be stressed when I'm painting. If I've got a problem, I'll just adapt. I'll use that while I've got some on the bush because there's a few little rocks around here like that, look. And then we'll rinse the brush and underneath there, we'll come back to our original colours and put a little bit of dark in here. We need to let the painting dry now before we progress any further. 